I've got this limb here so it's just starting to, you can just start to bend it a little bit. And uh, my, my yearly growth rings are kind of tapered out. Uh, one stops right here, one comes down here, and that fades out into a, the next ring down. So at this point, I'm going to stop taking wood off but with the draw knife like this, and I'm just going to start using it as a scraper. So I'll go ahead and put the tip on the floor and grab it up here by the handle section. Just give it a push. You can see it's starting to bend pretty good. But it's still, it's a, a little weaker here than it is down in this part. So we're going to concentrate our scraping down in this area. And if you don't want to just scrape, say if you've got a stiff spot, you don't want to just come right here and keep scraping away, scraping away like that. You want to blend it. You want to blend those scrapes back up into the entire limb so that you don't end up making a hinge right in here. And just make sure, uh, be real conscious of the way that your uh, the way that your draw knife is or your scraper. Um, you know this limb here is twisted this way just a little bit. So if my draw knife is straight all the time, I'm going to be making this side of the bow thinner than this side. So just keep an eye on it and make sure that uh, your limb thickness is the same or fairly the same all the way across. So next we'll go ahead and put some rough knocks in here so that our, our, our tiller and string will hold on there. And then we'll go ahead and put it in the block. All right, so first thing I'm gonna do is mark down here on the sides about where my knock shoulders are gonna be. And I'm just gonna draw a line where my file cut is gonna be. So, Right about in there, ought to do it. Now I'm gonna take, I've just got a little rat tail file here. I'm gonna use my finger as a guide to, so that I don't uh, uh, file down into here. But I'm just gonna start taking out right there where I've drawn that line. It helps if you tap the sawdust out of it every now and then. Do the same thing on the other side. So here's the roughed out knock that we just filed in. Uh, you want to make sure, especially right in here, that you round these in just a little bit because you don't want to leave a sharp edge right here. Okay, so I've got my tiller and string right here. Uh, it's pretty long, just a, a real heavy bowstring. Um, I'm going to put it on here pretty loose. So I went ahead and put it over the top knock, and now I'm just going to come down here and tie a timber hitch in the bottom of it. Doesn't have to be tight, uh, needs to be pretty loose actually, so we can get it over our tillering block. So I'm just going to loop that around the bottom right there and put that back on the top knot. So we've got a real, just a real loose string kind of hanging here. Uh, we're going to put this on the tiller and block here just a minute and give it a little pull and it'll really help us to see how these limbs are bending in relation to one another. So let's move on over. So we'll go ahead and just give it a pull, see what it looks like. You can see that both limbs are bending pretty evenly. Uh, both limbs are stiffer towards the outer two-thirds, so that's where we're going to concentrate our scraping. We'll take a little bit off the outer two-thirds of both limbs and then we'll put it back on the block and see what it looks like. So even though we're taking, we're going to concentrate our scraping out here towards the outer two-thirds of these limbs, we want to continue to blend it back up into the entire limb. Say if we take about four or five scrapes off of this stiffer part, we want to make sure that we make another couple of scrapes, at least one or two, uh, to blend it back up into the limb. And you'd 
be very surprised at how much just a little bit of scraping and how much these this little uh, thin uh, shavings that you're taking off there, how much it'll change the way that those limbs are bending. So uh, even though it doesn't look like you're doing much, it, it can really change the way the limbs are bending uh, and you can really take off too much too quickly if you don't take it out of here and take it back to the tiller and block and check it every now and then. So take a few scrapes off, you know, 8, 10, 12 scrapes or so, whatever you feel comfortable with, and then take it back over there and check it out again. Stick it back in the tiller and block and give it another couple of pulls and see what it looks like now. Not quite as stiff. Those outer two thirds are still the stiffer parts of the limb, and that's fine. But I can tell that it's a little bit lighter. So we'll just do exactly what we just did. We'll take it back over to the vise. We'll take, uh, we'll concentrate our scraping. So we'll, we'll concentrate our scraping out here towards the, uh, the outer two thirds of the limbs. Um, we'll, even though, you know, like I said before, we'll take off most of the wood out here, but we're gonna wanna blend it over the entire limb. too much of a tr uh, problem but if you start trying to put uh, real tight radiuses in in your recurves and you don't have a backing on here a lot of times what will happen is when you bend it down you'll lift a splinter uh, off of the belly side of the bow and we want to try and avoid that so the way I get around that is just put a piece of aluminum flashing in there and I'll clamp it to my bow right here and 
Now, when I bend my uh, bend my my bow down, this right here is holding all the uh, all those splinters and holding everything down, uh, and it give, it gives it kind of a temporary backing on the belly of the bow here. Okay, now that we've got it clamped in here, we'll just go ahead and let it, uh, let it cool, just like we did the handle section, and then we'll do the other limb, um, and we'll go from there. Alright, now we're making some progress. I've got both limb tips steamed, I've got the recurves in them. Uh, I took that little, um, that little bend towards the belly out of this one limb, um, and everything's looking pretty good. We can go ahead and, uh, and finish off the tiller now. Now, uh, what I did uh, after I steamed both of these limb tips, I just went ahead and set this stave in the house and let it dry for about three weeks. Um, I Personally, I like to use steam to bend any kind of wood. I've, I've used dry heat before and it works well, uh, especially with, with uh, thinner wood like these limb tips. But I have also messed up some really nice wood with using dry heat. You got to be really careful to uh, not to drive too much moisture out of it. If you go that route, um, like I said, personally, I like to use steam because it's a whole lot safer. Uh, you don't have to worry about making the wood too brittle, but you do have to wait uh, and let it dry out just a little bit. Okay, so I just put this thing back in the uh, tillering block here. We're going to back up and give it a little pull and see how that steaming the, the, uh, the limb tips change the tiller. All right, you can see the left hand limb still looks pretty good. The right hand limb has got some issues. Uh, the outer third or so, or outer half of the limb is, is way stiffer than the uh, kind of the, the middle part. So we're gonna go ahead and uh, take this thing off, put it back in the vise, do some more scraping and even all that out. So this piece, this uh, portion of the limb right here is still way stiff. We're gonna go ahead and uh, concentrate some of our scraping right here to kind of even this whole limb out. We'll take some off of this entire limb because it's still bending really good. Uh, and then we'll put it back on here and see what it looks like. All right, so this is the stiffer portion of that limb that was on the right hand side. So we're gonna go ahead and concentrate our scraping right in here while we blend it into the entire limb. tell it's a little bit lighter and it's starting to even out just a little bit but it's still you know we're still having the same issues so we need to put it back on there and kind of concentrate on the same areas take a little bit more off put it back on here so again this is the stiff part right here attention to your limb tips here because when you're when you're working on this portion of the limb up here it's easy to 
kind of neglect the limb tips and you end up with uh, with it being thicker down here so you know every now and then just take a look at it and thin them out if you need to This limb is bending pretty uniformly over the entire limb, so I'm, I'm not really concentrating on any one area. I'm just taking wood off the whole thing. And back on the tiller and block again. You can see it's a little bit more even than it was. Uh, that stiff spot in the right hand limb out where it starts to curve up, it's still a little bit stiff, but it's getting better. It's still way, way heavy. So we'll put it back in the vise and keep on doing what we're doing. Okay, so I took a break for a couple days and we're back at it. Uh, I've got the bow back on the tiller and block. Um, uh, the limb that was over here is now here, so just be aware of that. It's going to look a little different. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and just back up and give it a pull uh, and see what it looks like. Okay, about the outer two-thirds of both limbs are still pretty stiff. Um, the left-hand limb, which was on the right-hand side uh, last time I had it on the block, um, still, has, uh, still has kind of a, a little bit more of a um, reflex in it than the other limb, so we'll straighten that out. Concentrate a little bit more scraping on the left hand limb here. Um, but it's starting to look, starting to get there, starting to look good. Okay, so that's about what brace height is going to be when this bow is strung. Um, everything looks pretty good. Uh, uh, the limbs are bending pretty evenly, so we'll go ahead and just start taking the, uh, the weight down a little bit uh, while we're still uh, keeping an eye on the tiller. Um, so we'll take it back to the vise, and, and now that we've got the limbs bending evenly, we'll just uh, start on the weight. So at this point, uh, now that the limbs are bending evenly, I'm just going to go ahead and reduce the weight enough uh, so that I can go ahead and, and actually put a string on this bow and brace it up. And then once we get it braced up, we can put it back on the tiller block and really see uh, how, the, how the limbs are bending uh, and really get a feel for what the bow is pulling. I, I imagine it's probably it's pulling over 100 pounds right now if I tried to string it now. String this thing. It's still way heavy. You can kind of see we've got a little bit more of a um, gap here than here. 
So this limb here is probably a little bit stiffer, but we'll go ahead and stick it in the block and, uh, just to make sure. Um, it's way heavy, uh, and that's good. We've got plenty of, uh, plenty of wood to play with, so we'll go ahead and stick it back in the block and get started. So I can already see that right, right in here, we've already got a very slight hinge started, but that's fine. Um, we've still got plenty of wood to work with. It's still way heavy, so we've got a lot to take off. We'll just make a note, um, and it's good to have a pencil just to make a pencil mark right in here so that we'll know to, to shy away from that area when we're taking wood off. And you don't want to you don't want to pull it too too far at this point. You want to just ease it into uh, into your bend. Um, uh, you don't want to really pull it much past what the finished bow weight is going to be. So uh, you know if you're shooting for a 60 pound bow, you don't really want to put much more than 60 pounds of pressure on it, or you'll start uh, uh, getting more string follow than you you, you should have. So that looks pretty good. Uh, the right hand limb uh, is a little bit stiff, so we'll go ahead and concentrate a, a few more scrapes on it. Um, but overall, it looks good. Uh, we'll just shy away from that slight hinge on the uh, uh, outer portion of the left hand limb and take a little bit more weight off. Uh, and, but it's starting to shape up, starting to look like a bow. Okay, so I went ahead and took uh, about eight or 10 scrapes off of this limb. Um, and a few more off of the top limb here. I went ahead and shortened my string. Uh, that's going to raise the brace height a little bit. We'll go ahead and restring it, put it back on the block, and uh, it should have changed a little bit, uh, but we'll see. See the brace height's a good bit bigger. Still, um, still got more of a gap here uh, than right in here. But that, you know, the way we, the way we laid this bow out. Uh, the bottom limb here is a, an inch shorter than the top limb, so it's going to be a little bit stiffer, uh, but not much. Everything's bending pretty good. Uh, it's just, it's still pretty stiff, so we'll just take off a a few more scrapes off of each limb and uh, put it back on here and see how it feels. Now when you get to this point to, to, to the final tillering stage you want to go real slow because you can overshoot uh, the amount of wood that you want to take off and end up with your bow being too light. Uh, there's a couple of ways to add weight to a bow but uh, you know we don't want to have to go there if we don't, uh, if we don't have to. So just take it real slow, take a few scrapes off, put the string back on it, give it a couple of pulls, and see how it feels. Because you can always take more off, but it's hard to put it back on. And we're still favoring, uh, we're still shying away from this one little area uh, on this right hand limb there. Um, it was still bending just a slight bit, kind of out of, uh, off of the, the arc that, that I like to see in a bow. So we'll just leave that alone and don't take, take any more wood off of there. And as we take more wood off the rest of the bow, uh, it'll even this little hinge out.
still pretty heavy. I'm going to go ahead and just stick it on the block uh, just to make sure uh, that my tiller is still even. Um, I can tell it's getting lighter, but I want to look at it at a distance just to make sure that I haven't you know, favored one limb over the other and, and swap the tiller over again. Okay, you can see the bottom limb, which is on the right-hand side. It looks like it's bending. Uh, it looks like the arc is just a little bit more than the left-hand side. Um, and if you'll recall, uh, the right-hand limb or the bottom limb on this layout of the bow needs to be a little bit stiffer. So we'll go ahead and just lay off of that. Um, we're going to take a few more scrapes off of it, but we'll take a few, uh, few more uh, off the, the top limb uh, than we do on, off the bottom limb. Just kind of even it out. What happens is, uh, if if you, you if you don't make this bottom limb just a little bit stiffer, uh, it, it tends to bend uh, just a slight bit more than this top limb does. And over time, it might take a year or two years or you know however long. But every time you shoot this bow, that bottom limb is working just a little bit harder than the top limb. Uh, and back when I first started making bows, uh, I had a couple that, that I tillered like this. And eventually, uh, this bottom limb just starts bending more and more and more. And the top limb seems to get stiffer. Uh, it just, uh, the tiller gets unbalanced. Um, and it uh, just makes the bow not shoot very good. Okay, so uh, I'm going to go ahead, as I'm reducing the weight on this bow, I'm going to go ahead and start favoring the, the inner, inside two-thirds of these limbs, right in here and right in here, because if I continue on uh, taking wood off the whole, uh, the whole limb, it's going to take these working recurves that we put in there, and it's just going to straighten them right out. Uh, so uh, with, a, with a bow that's uh, got this profile, uh, that's got some slight reflex in the limb tips, uh, I like to leave those just a little bit stiffer um, and that, that helps to keep that, that reflex in them instead of straightening it out and putting, uh, putting string follow in it. So we'll go ahead and, and start taking more wood off the, the middle part of this bow and reduce the weight down uh, in that section. Quite a bit easier to string as we're taking wood off, taking quite a bit of weight off. We'll go ahead uh, next time. We'll shorten our string a little bit and up that brace height. It's probably only about three inches now. So we're getting really close uh, to having a finished tiller on this bow. Um, uh, it's probably pulling 70 pounds or so right now. We'll take a few more pounds off of it. Um, and then we'll uh, go ahead and finish off our handle section. Okay, um, we've, we're still kind of heavy here, so we've still got some wood to play with. And if you notice right here, just ever so slightly, 
there's a, a very, very slight hinge right here. Uh, and there's a stiff spot right in here. So what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and, uh, and take a little bit more wood off of right here and a little bit more wood here and then some off of that entire uh, limb right there and that'll even everything out. That's why you go, uh, that's why you go slowly, you, you take a little bit off, you look at it on here because if you try to take too much off uh, and go too quickly, these little hinges like this uh, will escape your attention and if you end up, you know, if this bow was a finished weight right now, I, I, there's no way I could fix this without making the bow lighter or shortening it or something like that to, to bring the weight back up. So here's our pencil mark right in here. This is where the stiff or the, uh, the, the slight hinge is. We're just going to avoid that area. Okay, so that's full draw. That's 28 inches. And it looks pretty good. Okay, so uh, for the most part, this bow is done. Uh, all we're going to do now is just We'll narrow this handle section up a little bit because I like a little bit finer handle. Uh, we'll go ahead and cut an arrow shelf in and sand it off and you'll have a finished bow. Now this right here is dead center of the bow. Um, uh, so I like to come oh, about an inch, inch and a quarter above the center to cut in my arrow shelf right there. Uh, and then your handle obviously is kind of right in here so your handle is uh, kind of uh, favors towards the bottom limb just a little bit that's why uh, that bottom limb is a little bit shorter than the top so we'll go ahead and narrow this up a little bit make it a little bit more comfortable uh, for our hands and then we'll go ahead and just cut this arrow shelf in there and uh, uh, finish off the handle section Okay, so I've started cutting in my arrow shelf with my farrier's rasp right in here. And the if you get one of these rasps on the edge of it, they've got a cutting surface and they work really good for uh, cutting on the edge of the rasp down in uh, to these arrow shelves like this. So I cut in a little ways like that and then I come back uh, and just kind of take off this. remainder. And just keep on like this until you get your arrow shelf. Uh, I don't I don't like to go down uh, quite to center shot but um, just about to center shot you still need a, a fair bit of wood right you know uh left in here so that it, you don't weaken it too much so just be careful not to cut your arrow shelf down too deep and uh, in a minute we'll look at the profile um, this way and this way so you can get an idea of how your arrow shelf is placed in relation to your fades from your handle down into your uh your limb because that's pretty important Okay, so we're done. We've got a finished bow. Uh, so now all you got to do is sand it off, uh, seal it up, and go hunting. We'll see you in the woods. I hope you enjoyed it.